Comparative Aspects of Diet in Amazonian Forest Dwellers, in which she looks at the dietary ecology of four forest living indigenous groups, the Arara, Paracana, Arawete, and Mayoruna. Um, I did not find here what I went looking for, which is her initial observation of combo being used, but um, this paper is actually super fascinating. So Zach, if I may have this back for a moment. Um, so she, um, I'm just, I'm going to share a few of the conclusions and then show one more screenshot and then have us talk about this a little bit. Um, she, she, this is actually, this is really good work. She starts with a hypothesis, which I'm not going to share until the end. Um, this is not simple descriptive. This is not data driven. This is hypothesis driven science, which is um, particularly tough when you're doing cultural anthropology. Um, so she looks at four tribes, all of whom inhabit uh, what's called terra firm Amazonian forest. There's a lot of flooded forest. There, you know, a variety of forests in the Amazon actually, but these are all these. She she goes she goes looking for and at four distinct tribes that are not exactly St. Patrick, that is they don't overlap, but then tribes don't overlap in the Amazon and that's part of what's going on here, but they inhabit very similar ecological spaces, right? That is to say, um, even people who know the Amazon could walk into the forests in which each of these four tribes live and uh, immediately see a lot of similarities in terms of the species composition. So, um, they, all of them have distinct both carb, the plants um, that they eat, and um, prey um, diet compositions. And I wanted to say just a few words specifically about the prey. Mm -hmm. um, so the Arara are dietary generalists. Specifically, here I quote, the Arara consume the widest range of prey species, including stingrays and electric fish, the intestinal tract of a wide variety of mammals, and pinto, Milton reports in her 92 paper, Pinto from 1989 reports that vultures, house rats, and hawks are eaten by the arara when other meat is not available, but the single most important prey item of the arara was monkeys, particularly capuchins. Okay, mm. so they're, they, they, they get capuchins the most. Um, they, I don't remember if they state a preference for capuchins. Some of the other um, tribes do state a preference even when it's not predominant in their diet, um, but they're really wide generalists. So I would just point out, capuchins are... Almost the only thing on that list that sounds like it would be at all palatable to somebody <laughs> who shares our diet because house rats. they're frugivores. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to eat house rats, rats but yeah. yeah. In a pinch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Capuchins are frugivores, and frugivores taste better than carnivores or omnivores. Yeah. Um, and folivores taste, taste good too. Uh, folivores. Depends. Including grazers. It, yeah, right. grazers all, much Almost more. all of our meat animals are full of ours. A rainforest full of ore might be particularly awful by virtue of all of the toxins in, in the leaves of yeah. durable trees. Oh, actually, trees. there's so... We're getting to something interesting okay, here. Cool. Uh, so the Paracana, and incidentally, none of these four tribes that she was looking at are any that we have um, spent any time with. We haven't, we don't, I, I didn't, at least didn't know any of them by name. The Paracana are specialists on terrestrial game, in particular land tortoises, tapir, peccaries, which is wild pigs, armadillo, and paca, uh, which is a big rodent. They report that they are most interested in eating tapirs, however, whereas both the Arara and the Arawete say that they avoid eating tapirs whenever possible. So they didn't get a lot of tapirs when she was um, there observing them. And instantly she took in all of her own food, which is pretty rare for cultural anthropologists, but she took in all of her own food in order not she to- She brought in food she, with her. She brought in all of her own food to prevent the local people from um, either hiding food that they found particularly precious they didn't want to share with her so that she would get a skewed right. vision of what she was oh, eating. Um, and to avoid um, basically changing how much they needed such that they had to hunt more and thus change the fractional composition of what they're eating. So, so really well done again. All right. Who were these people? Uh, those were the Paracana, who Paracana. specialized in terrestrial game. And these are and in, um, in um, th this was in the Brazilian Amazon. Okay. So, and they avoid eating tapir no. when they can. The, oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Yep. So no, 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 no. They prefer eating tapir and the Arara and the Arawete avoid eating tapir. Avoid eating tapir. I yeah. must say... There is no job on earth easier than avoiding eating tapir, <laughs> given how skittish and hard to find this animal is. It's really, well, it's amazingly easy not to eat tapir. If you're hunting all of your own food, and so for those who don't know, tapirs are big. They're really big, and one tapir could feed a, a village for a while. Yeah, but if it's not your thing, I mean, you're not going to find yourself accidentally consuming a tapir. It just... That's probably true. <laughs> Oops, I killed a tapir. Oh, Gotta man. eat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Nope. Um, okay, the Arawete, uh, again, uh, Brazilian Amazonian people, specialize on large birds, including macaws and toucans, right? Um, plus, toucan check this I out. Toucan I can almost see. Toucan I can almost see, but not only do they specialize in your macaws, but they have macaws as pets. Their villages are filled with pet macaws, and their diet is leaning heavily towards macaws that they are catching wild and eating. Catching wild, but not raising. Not raising. Interesting. What do those pet macaws think? Macaws are freaking smart. They have theory of mind. Them and 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 uh, I want to say COVIDs, corvids, um, like the crows and jays, are incredibly smart, social, long lived, generational overlap. All of this, they must be appalled. So they are the macaws feeding. Yes, yes. <laughs> they are feeding these macaws. I'd be uh, very the pet the the pets presumably. I don't know. Maybe so, not. <clears throat> I, I understood. You just suggest that they were um, catching and raising for food, these macaws. Or is there no, a no, distinction? No, 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 no. They no, no, keep no. those they're, pets. They're hunting macaws and eating them, and then they also have pet macaws. They also have pet macaws that they never eat. So apparently. You know, okay. this is this is almost a throwaway line in this paper um, that I found. Yes. I was unable to track down further. But, you know, the, the author here, Milton, who, again, seems to have been doing really careful work back in 1992 is when it was published, um, lived in the villages with each of these tribes for some period of time and, you know, was was a careful observer and cultural anthropologist and, and usually a, a primatologist. Um, oh, also, the Arawete, unlike all three of the other tribes that she's uh, looking at, have no dogs and they have no desire for dogs. When asked, they say, why would we have dogs? Whereas all the other three tribes are largely have dogs and use dogs to help them hunt. And when you say dogs, are you talking about domestic dogs? Are you yeah. talking about forest dogs that they have domesticated? I believe she doesn't specify, but I believe we're talking about domestic dogs, domestic given dogs. what we've seen in um, yeah, Amazon. Yeah, so that would be elsewhere. a modern change. Sure. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, oh, one more thing. The Arawete apparently also have 45 different classifications for not snow, mm. as, as you might imagine. <laughs> but I would imagine they have none. Right. They don't have a word for snow. I'm making that up, but probably not. They have 45 different classifications. And I don't know if classifications means words or what for honey. Mm. Oh, that makes perfect sense, right? doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. In, a, in an environment like that, where you have so many different source plants um, yeah, and age, and a lot of different species of bees. Although most of the bees aren't going to be making honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are more. I mean, there's. It's not just Apis mellifera. I think that makes that is going to be making uh, honey. Is it? It's Apis. It's other Apises. Uh, I don't know. I am going <laughs> to gonna opt say, out okay. of venturing a guess <laughs> okay. on that. I would have said maybe it is, but yeah. um, but I don't know. Okay. Um, or you know, really, the question is, make enough honey to be worth pursuing. Right. Um, yeah, a solitary but, bee is not going to be oh, yeah. Worth, yeah, worth, worth pursuing. Um, so finally, we have the Mayaruna, who are actually in the Peruvian Amazon, um, who specialize in peccaries. But they state that they prefer eating tapirs and sloths, mm. even though tapirs and sloths are harder for them to find, and most of their diet consists of peccaries. And this is a little, this is a little violent, so you know, close your ears if you don't want to hear how they, how they deal with the sloths when they find them. Quote, sloths are captured by climbing their tree, lassoing them with a noose made of vines, pulling them free, and then clubbing them to death on the ground. That's the, that's the sloth killing activity. Yeah. Um, and while she was there... It's probably a lot more humane than, you know, what other option do you have? Yeah, I mean, you could... You know, you, you could you, you, you shoot them out of the tree and have them fall. But that, then, ain't, that ain't going to be a fun death. Yeah, which is, uh, you know, how... How at least some uh, like it's at least had the Warani um, yep. hunt uh, uh, monkeys, monkeys. And sloths and things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and oh, incidentally, speaking of the Warani, Milton, the Warani, who are people whom we have spent time you know, around and with in the Ecuadorian Amazon, um, she points out that the diet of the Mayaruna, who are the people I was just talking about, actually most closely matches that of the Warani. Um, and so that is that is that is more similar to something that we have known. Um, the Mayaruna have the longest list of foods that they will not eat of any of the tribes she looked at. And here we go, some that are developmental stage specific. So with, for specifically with regard to howler monkeys, mm. adult Mayaruna do not eat howler monkeys, but children do. Wow. That's exactly the opposite of what I would predict. Right. Why? Yeah. Uh, because howler monkeys are obligate folivores and the toxins are liable to be more dangerous to a developing child or a pregnant woman. In fact, they're... Um, 
is a lot of anecdotal stuff and I believe a certain amount of uh, data to suggest that um, uh, aversions during pregnancy may be about protecting fetuses right. and things. So um, anyway, I would have expected an obligate full of or A to taste really terrible. In, in a landscape like the Amazon, where there's so many species and the obligate full of ores themselves are sampling from a wide variety of species, yes, and they're eating. where they're taking in the secondary compounds of the plants that have produced those secondary compounds in order to protect themselves. Right, right, exactly. So anyway, um, yeah, what is the explanation for... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Lots, lots of little juicy stuff in here, right? So, and some not so juicy stuff, including macaws. Yeah. Which uh, Charles Handley, he didn't specifically tell me about macaws, but he told me he, he was uh, a uh, the great Batman of the uh, Smithsonian. Who and was one of your mentors. A mentor of mine on BCI. Um, and uh, anyway, I've forgotten why he found himself eating parrot at some point, mm. but he uh, he reported that it was a lot like eating a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm guessing macaws yeah. are rather like that. Yeah. No, I have. Um, I may actually have less interest if I had to choose. If I was starving and I had to choose between monkey and parrot, I really don't want to have to ever eat either. But yeah. Um, oh, monkey. Yeah. Stands a good well, chance of being tasty. not just for. Not just for edibility, actually. Oh, I get yeah. there. I don't want to eat a monkey because it's a monkey, but yeah. from the point of view of what would the meat taste like, except for howlers, which are the exception, mm -hmm. all those frugivores probably taste just fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the peccaries surely taste good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you like a, bacon, you probably yeah, like peccaries. It's a pig. I bet yeah. it's a lot leaner. Mm -hmm. But um, And also... And ta you know, tapirs might... I you're bet you you're convinced good. not. No, no. Oh, oh you, you, you I think bet they you are good. Yeah, good. because because they're giant ground dwellers, so they are in part. I mean, the, the intact Amazon doesn't have much to graze per se, yeah. but the browsing at ground level um, is, um, I think. I mean, maybe just because there's a lot of new growth that they're going to be able to access, and the new growth has fewer secondary compounds. Yeah, and I bet they eat a lot of fruit too. Yeah. Um, uh, and the thing that is most famously delicious are um, the uh, paca, the pacas and agoutis, and agoutis are yeah. supposed to be absolutely delicious. Yeah, well, those are those are big, big rodents. Yep. And, um, and you know, night, um, pacas are mentioned once here, agoutis are never mentioned, capybara never mentioned. Um, but I imagine um, that the large, slow, somewhat dim ground-dwelling rodents get hunted out pretty quickly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be likely. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to, catch it from all of the capybara <laughs> enthusiasts out there for calling them dim, but sorry, compared to most of the other things on this list, they are. Yeah. Yeah. 